The purpose of classical fencing is to simulate as closely as possible an actual duel. Now you can't do that unless you understand the frost arms. And you can't understand the frost arms unless you know and understand the precise definitions of the seven fundamental actions. And you can recognize those when you see them. Well, fortunately, that's not difficult to do. Although we're discussing point exclusive fencing specifically, I think, you know, if you squint a little, you'll find that the principles involved are universal and apply to all kinds of weapons and all kinds of combat. Before we get into the particulars, let me just give you three reminders. Reminder number one. Remember, your goal is to hit without being hit. Defending yourself is more important than anything else. You must never be hit, never. When we analyze the frost arms, we identify the fencer who failed to defend himself. That's why we count touches against the fencer who receives them and not in favor of the fencer who delivers them. Reminder number two. Remember that there are only three kinds of actions, offensive actions, defensive actions, and preparations. An offensive action is one that has the capability of delivering a wound. A defensive action is one that prevents an offensive action from delivering a wound. Everything else, everything else is a preparation. Reminder number three. If there is only one hit, we don't have any rules to apply. There's nothing to figure out. In an actual duel, if you stab your opponent and he doesn't stab you, it really doesn't matter all that much how you did it. You could have stabbed him by error, by luck, by accident, by fluke. You could have done it standing on your head or executing a cartwheel. It doesn't matter. He's bleeding and you're not. Take the money and run. But we don't fence with sharp swords. So we need to understand what would have happened if they had been sharp. And that's where these definitions come in. Here are the seven basic actions you must know, understand, and be able to recognize. The point in line, the attack, the parry, the repost, the remise, the counter repost, and the counter attack. Let's go over them one by one. A point in line is an offensive action made by fully and completely straightening your arm, more or less horizontally, and aiming at the opponent's target. This is the simplest and most important action in fencing. It's offensive because it moves your point closer to your opponent's body. The point in line constitutes the first part of the attack and is a prerequisite for it. But it is also defensive because it prevents your opponent from attacking you without first removing your point from the line. You may advance or retreat or do any kind of footwork you please. It doesn't matter. The point in line is still in line. With the point in line, you may slightly alter the specific angle of your point and what specific part of the opponent's target you're aiming at, as long as you don't take the point completely away from the target or bend your arm. You may move the point in order to deceive your opponent's attempts to attack your blade and still maintain the point in line, as long as your point continues to threaten some part of your opponent's target and you don't bend your arm. Now, if you take your point completely away from your opponent's target, or you bend your arm, then your opponent has an opportunity to initiate some offensive action of his own, like putting his point in line. The attack is the initial offensive action made by extending the arm and continuously and progressively threatening the opponent's target. You could consider the attack as the further development of the point in line. Let's break down the five criteria of the attack. One, it is the first offensive action. And the first offensive action only, there is only one attack in the phrase. Number two, it is executed by extending the arm fully and completely. That is, it begins by establishing a point in line. Number three, it must threaten the opponent's target. Number four, 
it must threaten the opponent's target continuously without removing the threat at any time, no matter how slightly or how briefly. Number five, it must threaten the opponent's target progressively. If after extending the arm fully and completely, you have not delivered the hit, then you must immediately, and without hesitation or delay, move the threat forward until you do deliver the hit. Recognizing the attack is simple. The first fencer who establishes a point in line by straightening his arm and aiming at his opponent's target is attacking. The thing to understand here is that it isn't who starts to straighten his arm first that matters. It's who finishes straightening his arm first that counts. Consider the classic Wild West showdown between the good guy and the bad guy out in the street. The good guy never starts to draw first. The bad guy always starts to draw first. But the good guy finishes drawing first, and that's how he manages to shoot the bad guy before the bad guy can clear leather. The parry is the defensive action made with the blade that prevents a hit from arriving. It does that by pushing away danger, by moving the point away from the target. Now, this is a little different than the way we commonly use the term parry in practice. We parry in the air and still call them parries. We deceive parries and still call them parries. But in terms of its function in the frost arms, a parry only matters when it works. When it actually prevents a hit from arriving. Attempted parries don't matter. Insufficient parries that are mere grazings of the blade don't matter either. A parry is either successful or it doesn't exist. To repost means to reply. The repost is an offensive action made by the fencer who parries the attack. The counter repost is the offensive action made by the fencer who parries the repost, or another counter repost. Now, in training, we often use the word repost generically to include reposts and all counter reposts, but in analyzing the frost arms, we distinguish them in order to identify their place in the sequence of actions. Counter reposts from the attacker are odd numbered, and those from the defender are even numbered. Whether repost or counter repost, your reply must be made immediately without hesitation or delay. If you hesitate or delay, your opponent may have time to interdict your reply with a remise. A remise is a continuation of an offensive action. Most often, it's a continuation of the attack, a remised attack. But it could be a remise to repost, or a remise to counter repost, maybe even a remise to counter attack. A remise is made in the same line as the original action and without bending the arm. In order to interdict the opponent's offensive action, a repost or a counter repost, the remise must arrive before the counter repost or the repost begins. The remise doesn't have to be fast, but it does have to be first. A counterattack is an offensive action made during the opponent's attack. For the counterattack to succeed, the attack must fail. Now, the beauty of the counterattack is that if it is correctly executed, there's no defense against it. Your opponent is committed to his attack, and on Earth where I come from, you can't go left and right at the same time. A counterattack is much like that little girl with the little curl. When it's good, it's brilliant, and when it's bad, it's suicide. Virtually everything else is a preparation. The engagement, the change of engagement, the beat, the change beat, the press, the foie small, the prise de fer, and feints of all kinds. Preparations. The important thing to know about preparations is this. A preparation is not an attack. A preparation is not part of the attack. A preparation precedes 
the attack. You know, no matter how hard you beat the blade, the blade doesn't bleed. Now, while you're preparing, you're vulnerable to an attack. Indeed, the very best time to attack is while your opponent is preparing. You know, the, uh, there's this scene in uh, Indiana Jones and Raiders of the Lost Ark where Jones is confronted by a master swordsman and the swordsman is flourishing his weapon around. And while he's doing that, Jones shoots him. Attack on the preparation. Okay, and that's our list. That's not a complete list of every fencing term you should know. You'll pick up a few more as you go along. But you must understand these basic actions completely right from the start. I recommend you memorize the definitions verbatim. As far as recognizing them when you see them, well, that requires a little practice. You get that practice by calling the phrases for fencers while they're sparring, just as you would as president de combat or director. But I think that's beyond the scope of this video. You cannot understand the phrase d'armes if you do not know and understand the precise definitions of the basic fencing actions. And if you don't understand the phrase d'armes, then you can't possibly simulate a duel. Of course, you're perfectly free to bash your blade around any other way you please. But you won't be fencing.